Everybody, it's great to be back here again tomorrow. It's Friday, Pashat Bishalach. I want to open up the portion with a verse from the end of the book of Genesis of Bereshit, um, in chapter 50, verse number 25, Vayashba Joseph makes his brothers swear to him, saying, God will surely remember you. And you will take my bones out of Egypt. Joseph, Yosef at Sadiq, at the end of the book of Genesis, is requesting, making his brothers swear to him, that they will take his bones out of Egypt. And this week's portion, Bashat Bishalach, where, the, where Am Yisrael, the people of Israel, are leaving Egypt, we see that Moshe Rabbeinu is involved in exactly that, to fulfill the oath of Joseph. We look in verse number 19 in chapter 13 in, in Exodus, our portion, Vaikach Moshe Tatzmot Yosef, Moshe Rabbeinu takes the bones of Joseph, Imo ki yashbeh, because he, he made Israel swore, saying, Pokod yifkod elokim etzeh, that God will surely remember you, valitem et atzmotai mizeh. You take my bones out of here. Now, we have to ask our question. It's, first of all, it sounds a little strange, this kind of language, take my bones out of here. Well, many years pass, if we, if we pay attention to the time frame, Joseph living um, at the beginning, right before Israel went into real serious slavery, and Israel was 210 years in serious slavery in Egypt itself, and then later on, schlepping the bones around in the desert, it was 40 years, and then Israel having to capture the land of Israel and, and divide the land until Joseph was finally laid to rest, as we see in Joshua chapter 24, verse 32, that that smote Yosef and the bones of Joseph, so that Israel took out of Egypt, they buried in the city of Shechem, Bechelkat HaSadeh, in the field, right out my window in this direction, um, which Jacob purchased, etc. This is mentioned um, in chapter 24, at the end of the book of Joshua. Um, now it's fascinating, as we're following the, the time frame, and as I mentioned, if we add all that period together, we're getting a situation of, of close to 300 years around, I'm just throwing a number, but it's pretty close to that, around 300 years since the time of Joseph making his brothers swear to him to bury his bones and the whole ordeal of, of Egypt coming out of Egypt and going, of course, eventually through the desert, carrying them around and finally reaching their burial place. And we know how hard we have to beg our government to allow us to, today to go visit the, the site of Joseph. Now, the term bones is very, again, as I opened up, it seems a little strange. You know, talking that way, the bones of Joseph. What is the, the deep meaning behind the bones of Joseph? And that's something that we surely have to understand a little bit. In, in the Hasidic um, um, explanations, they explain, if we look in Hebrew, we know the word etzem. How do we say bone in Hebrew? Etzem. Etzem means atzmut. It's my inner essence. An essence and when you talk about inner essence of someone, it means atzmi. Atzmi is, is, is me, like independent. Etzem is, is referring to something pnimi, within, something very, very deep. So um, we see that there's a connection here in the verse of taking the bones of Joseph with the next part of the verse, pakod yifkod. What does pakod yifkod mean? God will surely remember you. It's like a double a double um, word. It's used twice. Pakod yifkod became a symbol and a secret code of, of redemption, our rabbis say. Pakod yifkod. That God will remember you. And if we, if we try to understand what is the connection of remembering to Joseph, and it's brought down in our sources, and in our holy sources, the holy sages, of course, um, that Joseph reflects what we call the Midat HaYisod, the foundation. We know that every one of our forefathers, each represent a certain one of, this, of the ten spheres, the Kabbalistic spheres we talk about. And one of them is called foundation, that is Joseph. What specialized foundation? What, is, what does it mean by being a foundation? Joseph is, a, the, the Yisod, is the pipeline, is, is where everything is focused and, ch and channeled through his personality, through his, um, his midah, through his attribute. That is what the Yisod, the Tzaddik, is all about. 
that things are channeled through him, he becomes a channel, he becomes a vessel for bringing down abundance, divine abundance, through him. And that is what we see with, with um, Joseph, 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 Yosef. Everything about him is success. Um, we see that he's successful in all that he does. Because we know that success depends on this attribute of Yisod. When you have that divine energy coming down and the channel is open, things are going to flow and then you can be able to be succeed in what you're doing. Now Joseph had that ability. Everything is focused through him. Remembering is all connected to that. We remember something. We are focused on what we're doing. It's, it's, and the word for memory in Hebrew is, is also called Zachar. Zachar is, means a male, right? But the letter is Zachar means, could also mean male, but could also mean to remember in Hebrew. Zachar is to remember. If we take those letters around in Hebrew, it also spells a word Rakez, to focus, to, to channel things in a direction. Now, and why is, it, why is a man called a Zachar? Why is he called that? Because the man have that issue, which always say women can concentrate on a few things at once, they have that special ability. But men have, have the other, the opposite with them, is they have to focus on one thing and they're very easily distracted and being um, pulled around to different directions. And the woman knows how to focus. She knows how to focus naturally. That is a, so that's why men is called zachal, to remember. We have to work on our tikkun, our rectification, to remember who we are and to focus. Now this, of course, is on a personal um, understanding, but of course it's on the national understanding. So we're talking about redemption from Egypt. Joseph is, is uh, what's going on in Egypt? We were totally lost. We were totally forgot. What is exile? Exile is when we forget who we are, where we've come from. We totally become assimilated into the area that we are exiled to. And on a personal level, of course, at a national level, exile is always that. When you are in exile, you are not in tune, you're not focused on where have you come from, on your goal, where, where, have you, where are you going to? We have a personal exile, and the, re, the final redemption, all our redemptions uh, depend on individual redemptions. And when we're not focused, and we get lost. And that's, that's exactly what we, you know, we, we have to realize that our goal as human beings, our goal is to remember where we come from. What are, where are we going to? what our goals are, not to lose balance, not to lose our pause, our, what's the word, lose our focus. Joseph, we think, about, we think about it, when he went to the field to look for his brothers, he went to the field and a and, and, and man meets him in the field and he says, I'm requesting my brothers. Right? He said he, was, who Toeba said he was lost in the field. He was losing his balance. He wasn't, he wasn't focused. That exactly is the, the root behind exile. We're not focused on who we are. We lose our balance, we're off balance, we're influenced by others. Joseph comes along that special attribute to remind us what remembering is all about. Joseph is all about remembering. As we see, he told when he was in prison, remember who I am. I, I, was, I was a Jew stolen from the Hebrew land. Get me, you know, get me out of here. Joseph was re remembered, he had a great memory, of course. Joseph remembered very, very well. Remember all the brothers, they, they didn't recognize him. He recognized the brothers. He remembered very well who they were. They didn't recognize him. They were lost over there. This concept of knowing who we are, where we've come from, Joseph is telling his brothers, before he passes away, remember me, though, be focused on the goal, where we came from and who we are, our intrinsic atzmut, as we say, the bone means the inner essence of who we are, if we think about that, that is the key of our redemption. That is the key of our redemption. Now what's fascinating is that when Moshe Rabbeinu, in this week's portion, takes his bones, there's a beautiful account in the Midrash Tan Chuma about, I'll read a little bit about it, about finding Joseph's bones. It says, Vaikach Moshe Tatzmot Yosef, Moshe takes the bones of Joseph. The Midrash says, how did Moshe Rabbeinu know where Joseph was buried? And it was Serach Batasher, Serach. The daughter of Asher, she was Nishtaira Motoador, she was still a remnant from the previous generation, from all the tribes that passed away. But Serach, the daughter of Asher, the tribe of Asher, she remembers. She was around then. And again, here she represents that, we said the feminine aspect of remembering, they have it naturally. And she remembers. He hodiat Moshe Chan Yosef Kovo. She tells Moshe Rabbeinu where Joseph was buried. And Abdu Mitzrayim Basudo Aron, what do the Egyptians do? They made this 
the casket of, of metal and they threw it in the Nile River. Bamboshe, the mother of the needles, Moshe Rabbeinu stands up before the Nile River. Natalts, this, um, he takes this Evan, the stone, and he writes out, he carves out, um, Ale Sho, Sho means the bull, get out, come out bull, and he, and, he, and he screams, Joseph, Joseph, the time has come for redemption, and right now everyone's waiting for you, and if you don't come up now, we are clean from our oath. This is what Moshe Rabbeinu is saying to Joseph. Miyat Saf Alau Honoshe Yosef. Immediately the casket of Joseph rises. Okay. Beresh goes on. I'm not going to continue to the midrash, but whatever it is, we see here this fascinating uh, description of how Moshe comes along and and, and Asher Sef Bat Asher is involved in getting Joseph to come out, and how Moshe Rabbeinu is so involved in the re- retrieving the, bo- the bones of Joseph. Now, what again? So, so we continue with our line of thought. Is we see that Moshe Rabbeinu obviously sees the essence, the importance so badly of having the, the need to Joseph, to Joseph's bones to come out. Again, that comes back to the same concept. Moshe Rabbeinu represents the highest levels of, of, of spirituality. He rose to the highest level. as the greatest prophet of Israel. And Joseph, again, the, the beautiful light of the Torah from, from Moshe Rabbeinu, needs to be trans, transferred through Joseph. So we look at it in a spiritual way. Obviously, that is necessary. For the Torah to be given, to have the, the attribute of Joseph there in order to help channel it through, being that focus, that, that laser that, co- that lets all that energy come down to the world, to the physical world. And there, Moshe Rabbeinu is working in partnership with Joseph. It's a beautiful um, a teaching, but I've cooked, based on a verse, this all connects what we're talking about, which says in the, the chapter of, um, what's it called? brought down in Mishle, in the book of Proverbs, that's it, the book of Proverbs, and it says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse um, <coughs> 6, Bechol derachecha de'eo, you must know God in all your ways, v'hu yasher ochotech, and he will straighten your path. So, here in one small verse, um, King Solomon is giving a very, very important teaching to all of us, with all, you know God in all your ways, and he will strengthen your, he will straighten out your pathways. Rav Kook says something fascinating here, fascinating teaching. He says, mm-hmm. A person has to search God in all his actions, mm-hmm. amongst the actions that he is participating in them at the moment. When a person is praying, he says, then he goes, he must request HaKadosh Baruch Hu, request God, that, that, God will again, you must focus on what you're doing at tefillah, that you'll understand the, the, the deep meaning behind, behind, behind the prayers and the, and, the, and the concentration, the kavana, ritsuya, and, and the proper um, intention that will be accepted with, with the emunat with, with your heart of, 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 of faith. So in other words, when a person is involved in praying, his whole being has to be focused in praying. That is the focus, we said, to focus your energy in one area. And you shouldn't request knowledge in something else. When you are focusing in the area of prayer, Rav Kook is saying, this teaching of King Solomon means know God only in that area. Don't think about anything else. Don't let any other thoughts wander into your mind and, and distract you. Because he's doing this now, that means that God is totally connected to him in this action, in this particular action. Um, and he'll find God in this, in this, in this way, and, and not in somewhere else. So when, when you're doing something, it means that God is with you right now. Be focused. You're touching God. You're, you're, you're having a relationship with God right there because you're doing this. You do it with all your heart and soul. Do it that way. When he's learning Torah, he should know that he will find God, that he's, that he's that he's he's delving into the Torah, trying to understand everything clearly, with clarity, and remember very well what he's studying. And he and now he knows God through his Torah study. Because now his God has revealed him through Torah study. 
And he goes on to say, when a person is involved, when a person is doing love and kindness and helping somebody, he wants to help a friend who's in need. So you should ask God, please help me right now. I want to help this person. I want to help this, um, I want to help this thing. I want to do something important. Right now, God, please be with me in all, you know, in all my heart and soul. I'm focused on this, Hashem. God, please help me. So that, that he knows God is with him in that action. In every way, way, way. This is such an important lesson of cook, of, of life. That we must, in everything we're doing, let us be focused on HaKadosh Baruch Let's focus on Hashem when we're doing it. Now I want to take this particular <coughs> concept back to Joseph. This is what the, the Midate Yesoda is all about. When a person is scattered and he's focusing on a thousand things and he's not concentrating, you ever happen to be talking to a friend and you say hello and he's like, he's thinking somewhere else or talking, <laughs> he's focusing, he's not even listening to what you're talking to. It's a terrible thing when people wander off. When you're talking to your friend, say, God, right now God is between this. God is with you. Focus totally on your friend right now that you're talking to. Give him all the attention. Listen very, very, very carefully. This is a divine moment. Every moment's a special divine moment in your life. And focus on them. And that is a lesson what Joseph was, Joseph was saying. He was saying we have to focus on who we are, on our inner essence. And our rabbis say when Joseph um, was, was sold down to Egypt, right? he went through the city of Shechem, and the Midrash says where he, was, where he was sold from, you got to bring him back. you got to bring him back to the place you, you sold your brother down from. In other words, Joseph was always focused. He came with a focal point. His focal point was on to unite with his brothers, to become one unified nation together. Begins, of course, with unification of brothers. Brotherly love. And he was on that mission. His, God, his father sent him all the way to, from Hebron to connect with his brothers in unison. And it was interrupted because of the opposite. His focus was, was turned away to being thrown in a pit and then sold down to Egypt and all, everything that happened. But yet Joseph is always focused on the goal. The redemption, the return to our land is, is, is focusing on that point of our brotherly love, knowing that we, we unite as one nation and focus on our land and focus on where we've come from, from our Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, from our forefathers. And we're focused on, on what our goals are. And we realize that Hashem is within us, and everything we do, Hashem is with us. That is Bechol Bechechadeh. We will know God all our ways. Everything we do, we're going to be focused. That is the so. That is the, the special attribute of the tzaddik, of Joseph. And that is the remedy. And that is the recipe for redemption. Because in Egypt, until when we were lost and totally assimilated and already forgot who we came from, we needed that memory, something that would remind us all the time of our goal. That is what the bones of Joseph were all about. They were rattling in, in the grave. And they were always like a rattle, trying to wake you up, realizing that we have to focus on who we were and where we come from essence. That is what our redemption is all about. When we think about it now in, in our time today, God bless us to return to the land of Israel. We've come back, we've come a long way. We have to remember what our goals are, what the goals of our people are, is to come back to the land and to strengthen ourselves on connection to our Creator, to build a beautiful kingdom in the land of Israel, of Hashem, a kingdom that, with the light of Zion, the light of Torah will shine for the entire world, a, a, that we will live a life of true moral, ethical life that could be a light to the nations. This is all about who we are in our intrinsic way, our etzim, our atzamot, the bones. That's why it's so important in Judaism. When we go and we pray to our 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 um, kivritzah, they came the the grave sites of holy, holy rabbis, our holy sages, is because within, we, we recognize what that intrinsic energy, what that essence is all about of our, our forefathers. We've never forgotten who they are. And in their merit, we continue to focus on our goals of being a light to the nations, of being a great nation in the land of Israel. And God willing, we will see great things ahead of us. We've been through a very, very difficult time here in Israel with so many things going on, tragedies taking place, just... Yesterday, two soldiers were killed in a friendly fire, and then last week, a helicopter went down. One of the soldiers killed yesterday was my, the best friend of my um, son. Um, terrible, terrible tragedy. We will feel it personally, so close. And these things are happening again in, the, in Israel. These, it's, unfortunately, God, sometimes we don't understand it, why such righteous, good people are taken, but the... The, always to remember who we are 
and where we come from. And these things will rectify and bring again back Israel as a people to remember who we are and our goals and we will live in, in the land and prosper in the land with our terrible tragedies we see in the book of Joshua. Um, a terrible tragedy took place right? when, when Israel, when Achan took from the spoil and, and, and it would have caused. And there, again, the whole book of Joshua, you think one sin was mentioned the whole book of Joshua. Today, unfortunately, goes on. I mean, we don't want to mention there are a lot of bad things that have to be rectified in this country. We have to focus and realize that that in order to get out of the situation, we have to cleave to the midat yisod, cleave to what it, what it means to be the um, yisod, the foundation. And of course, that means to connect to who we are and connecting to Hashem, the creator of the universe. Bezat Hashem, Shabbat Shalom, Besorot Tovot, Yeshorot Benechamot.